This bridge is monumentally huge. Not this bridge, that bridge. Deep in the south of France, the stunning Milau Bridge is a record breaker. These tapering concrete giants are the tallest piers ever built. From the top, you would look down on the Eiffel Tower. Driving above the clouds, you cross the longest cable stayed bridge deck on Earth, spanning the deepest canyon in Europe. Each year, this spectacular engineering achievement faces extremes of wind and heat in a valley no one thought could ever be conquered. But it wouldn't be standing here today without the power of lightning. Three quarters of a million volts. What? A frying pan. No, a lost nuclear submarine. An accident in a silver mine. And a crafty trick of ancient Celtic boat builders. <laughs> How did all those make that possible? This triumph of engineering and design lies in the massive central mountains of southern France. It was built to lift a curse on the tiny town of Milan. For 30 years, the auto route linking Paris to the beaches of the Mediterranean sped south through the French countryside. Until it hit this, the Tarn Valley. A two and a half kilometer wide, 250 meter deep gorge, or in technical terms, a very big gap. To cross this gap, the tourist traffic was diverted off the four-lane express route and funneled over Milau's tiny two-lane medieval bridge. Summer in Milau was a nightmare. Gridlock traffic with three-hour tailbacks and 18-mile queues. After three decades of mayhem, it was time to conquer the gorge. And so in 2004, the world's tallest road bridge was born. A giant span, a quarter of a kilometre high. The final lightweight steel design was the engineering equivalent of a curved ball, because the road is not straight. It arcs as it spans across the valley. The bend, designed to keep drivers alert, meant that for the engineers, it was not going to be simple to build. They needed a complex skeleton of over 2,000 individual parts. Cutting that much steel quickly and accurately would mean they'd have to master one of nature's greatest forces. But first, to get the inside angle on the jigsaw of steel that makes up the deck, security have granted me special access. This in case you haven't guessed, is the tunnel inside the deck. So right now we're sandwiched between the road up above and then, well, nothing below. And from inside, you can see just how clever it is. It's hollow. They worked very hard to make it strong and light. And to do that, they needed thousands of pieces of steel that had to fit together precisely in a massive jigsaw to make the curve of the deck. And each of those pieces of steel had to be made individually and in record time. And there's the challenge. How to cut 2,078 giant pieces of shaped steel with incredible precision, phenomenally fast. The traditional way to cut steel is with one of these, an oxyacetylene torch. It works, but it's not fast and it's not easy. Painstakingly slicing over 2,000 steel panels with oxyacetylene was a potential nightmare for the engineers, especially with a 25,000 euro penalty for every day's delay if they went seriously over schedule. So for the solution to their cutting challenge, they harnessed the power of lightning. A bolt of lightning is an electric current that can generate up to 300,000 amps. That's enough to power 24,000 domestic kettles. More importantly, when a lightning bolt arcs through the atmosphere, it literally changes the world. It produces a new state of matter, and it's the key to cutting steel quickly. I'm about to see how. 
First, I'm going to control lightning. This machine belongs to a special effects expert. He's going to help me become a human lightning rod and direct a scary amount of power. Mark Turner is my lightning wizard. Wow. Mark, this is like walking onto the set of a 1950s B movie. Do you like it? It's brilliant, I think. What is it? It's a lightning machine. It's what we call a Tesla coil. OK. It produces lightning. What I'd like you to do is to put this on. I'll get dressed up. You do get dressed up. This that, is the fun bit. That looks like chain mail. It is chain mail. It's what we call a Voltrex suit. It'll right. protect you from the lightning. OK. There's holes in it. Um, so I... What are boots off? Boots off, please. Check it off. Are you entirely sure about what we're doing here? What can possibly scarf. go wrong? Scarf off. It's my best scarf. Look after that, James. So one foot in there. That's nice. Good. It's just That's the right good. size, isn't yeah. it? So the machine outputs about three quarters of a million volts. What? But this suit will protect you. It's got holes in. It has got holes in. Can I have your hand? No. Please. The metal suit will act like a cage, allowing the lightning to flow around me rather than through me. At least. That's the theory. Just run it by me again, the whole, you know, if the chain mail doesn't work thing, what happens? If it were to go through you, that would be a bad thing. When you say, let's not explore the badness of it, yeah, which is bad. It's very bad. I mean, it's not instant, but I mean, it's, your rods are against you rather than for you. Thank you. Stop talking now, please, Mark. Don't say any other words. Oh, look how I'm connected. The Tesla coil massively increases the mains voltage. When the energy level is high enough, current will flow to me, and I should be able to direct it with my finger. What about screaming and going like that very quickly? So, everybody with sensitive hearing ought to leave the room now. Anybody with implants in their ears or pacemakers or heart problems ought to leave now. And we're good to go. So, good to go, Richard. I feel lonely. Fantastic. Mark takes a moment to build the voltage to lightning levels. You feel OK? This machine was conceived by eccentric 19th century inventor Nikola Tesla. Labelled a mad scientist, well, he fell in love with a pigeon. He was also a pioneer of robotics, radio and electric power. In the course of looking for ways to transmit electricity across America, he devised this way of controlling lightning. Like nature's lightning, my lightning wants to find the shortest way to Earth. It is the most extraordinary experience, like millions of ants crawling all over me. OK, crew, let's go in. So I was making lightning come out of my fingers, briefly. It can't by some freak chance just continue to happen for me specifically. Unfortunately, no. That is a superhero movie I'm it thinking is. of, isn't it? OK. So controlling lightning looks good, but how does it help engineers who want to cut steel fast and precisely? The answer to that is as fantastic sounding as lightning is to look at because what is happening is the huge surge of electricity turns the air into a fourth state of matter, plasma. We're all familiar with three states, or solids, like ice, liquids, like water, and then gas, like steam from a kettle. And we're all familiar with the way you move from one state to another. If you heat the solid, you get a liquid. If you heat a liquid, you get a gas. Well, if you heat a gas with, say, a huge surge of electricity, you get plasma, the fourth state of matter. Plasma is actually common throughout the universe. The sun and the stars are pure plasma. But it's very rare on Earth. This is a slow-motion shot of man-made plasma, 
When it's controlled and super focused, its heat can be used to cut metal. This is a plasma cutter. Stream of pressurized air comes out of the tip. That air is charged. That's what creates the plasma. And that's what melts through the steel. Just as lightning charges air and turns it into a plasma, the electric current in the cutter does the same. It charges the air, turns it into a jet of plasma, and that's what melts the metal very quickly. This is staggering, the speed. It's actually three times faster than an oxyacetylene cutter. But there's absolutely no sense, of course, of resistance. There's no effort to it from me. I'm just moving along the surface of the metal. Plasma cutting is brilliant for big metal construction because it's quicker than oxyacetylene. It also creates a much cleaner cut, so it needs less finishing, and that speeds production yet further. Just air and electricity doing that. The power of lightning. Plasma cutting on a grand scale was the secret behind making the Milab Bridge road deck. Here at the Eiffel Metal Construction Company, yes, the same Eiffel that built the Paris Tower, the lightning heat of the plasma cutters sliced over 2,000 steel segments in just two years. So that's how the deck of the world's longest cable stayed bridge was built by controlling the power of lightning. But once they'd created the road deck, they faced another challenge, putting it in place without toppling the colossal towers built to hold it up. A lucky accident that reinvented the frying pan would solve this problem. The Milan Bridge engineers had to somehow launch their steel road across the top of the giant concrete piers. But to achieve this, they had to devise a radical new delivery technique. On your regular bridge, there's kind of two main ways of getting the deck onto the piers. First of all, you build your piers, which I'm doing here with bread, obviously. There we go, that's my piers. Then you can either build sections of your deck actually on site and crane them into position. And there's my bridge complete. Or option two, you can build the whole deck and push it out over the piers from the sides of the valley until it's in place. Perfect. But Milau is not your regular bridge. For one thing, because of the depth of the valley they're trying to cross, the piers are not little squat ones like these. They're great big tall ones like these, which means once they'd actually got these into place, 240 meters tall, the expense, difficulty, and complications of using cranes to lift the sections of road bridge up were just immense. So you go for the second option. You build the deck, you push it out. But with piers this high, 240 meters, the sideways force of the deck would just topple them and disaster. This is the engineer's solution, a special hydraulic jack. It uses two giant wedges which slide across each other to lift and move the steel deck over the piers. Using wedges means that the road deck is lifted and slid forward in one move, avoiding any pushing against the piers. Then, as the second wedge is pulled out, the deck is lowered to sit back down on top of the piers. Both wedges then reset to start the cycle again. Each cycle lifts and moves thousands of tons of steel, a modest 60 centimeters. But over 15 months, the giant road deck was slid precisely and safely into place. It's incredibly simple, but very, very clever. There's just one thing. 36,000 tons of decking are pressing down on top of these wedges. They have to be able to slide over one another to work. Well, to do that, the engineers had to rely on the most slippery substance ever created. 